There exist fields of growing extremism and resurgence of militancy in the region. The regional actors cannot just avoid the developing situation in Afghanistan from the sidelines. As the ground situation deteriorates, shocking, regional countries have sought to engage Taliban for peace and stability on their border. Ladies and gentlemen, it is paramount to find out how the regional countries can handle the Afghanistan conundrum and pave way for a peaceful process aimed at reaching an all inclusive, comprehensive, and Afghan led political settlement, the level to which can result in a spill over of terrorism and displacement of millions of innocent Afghan people. It is therefore extremely important to take stock of views from scholars and experts from the country in the region that could potentially that could potentially be an immediate victim of Afghan instability. I'll wind up my opening remarks here so that more time is allowed to our distinguished speaker to present their insights on the issue. I look forward to hearing the remarks of our esteemed speaker on the topic. I thank you. Thank you very much sir, for your welcome remarks. Uh, without any further delay, now I would like to introduce our speakers for today's event. Our first speaker for the event is Ambassador Azad Ahmed Choudhury. Ambassador Choudhury is currently serving as Director General at the at Institute of Strategic Studies, Islamabad. He was Pakistan's ambassador to the, to the Netherlands and the United States of America. He has also served as Foreign Secretary of Pakistan. Our next, uh, our next speaker has joined us from Afghanistan. Mr. Mir Vais Yassini is the first deputy speaker of the lower house of the Afghan parliament. He is a prominent figure of the emergency lawyer Jirga of Afghanistan. Uh, he has served as director of foreign relations and economic evaluation for Afghanistan's Ministry of Finance and director general of the Counter Narcotics Directorate, CND in Afghanistan. Then I welcome Dr. Gao Dutang from China for joining us today. Dr. Gao is Director at Institute of International Strategic and Policy Analysis and Director at Center for South Asia and Indian Ocean Studies at Department of International Relations, Law School, Shanghai University of International Business and Economy. And our speaker from Turkey is Dr. Hulip Aslan. Dr. Aslan is an expert in security, defense, and intelligence procedures and technologies. He is currently a faculty member of Hassan. Kalyonsu University and a researcher in the Security Studies Directorate of the CETA Foundation for Political, Economic, and Social Research based in Ankara. Dr. Aslan graduated from War College in the field of management in 1991 and he has assumed various tasks and appointments in Turkish armed forces, including deployments to Iraq, Afghanistan, and Bosnia. He authored the book Security Sector, Reform from Libya, and published numerous academic articles and reports. I again welcome Dr. Fawad Izzi for joining us today from Iran. Dr. Izzi's interest areas include public diplomacy, United States foreign policy, and Iran United States relations. His paper, a discourse analysis of American newspaper editorials, the case of Iran's nuclear program, was nominated for the best award at the, Asso at the Association for Education in Journalism and Mass Communication 2006 annual convention in San Francisco. He is serving as associate professor at Faculty of World Studies at University of Tehran. With this brief introduction, I would request Ambassador Azad Sholdi to formally start the proceedings of today's event with his insights on the issue. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, IEPI. Thank you, Professor Sajad, uh, for uh, discussion on this very important uh, subject. And uh, I do understand that uh, the perspective 
for this particular session is to assess the role that regional countries can play in facilitating peace and stability in Afghanistan. I would start by expressing uh, my deep concern uh, and I would say even anxiety on the deteriorating situation, situa security situation in Afghanistan. Why I say that is because the prospects of civil war or infighting have turned into a grim reality. And we in Pakistan have all along been saying to the United States that there was no military solution. And we will say the same to the Taliban and to the Afghan government that there is no military solution because war will bring more casualties, bloodshed of Afghan lives and will not resolve anything. And therefore, it is important that the first message that goes out to all Afghan factions from the regional countries is that they must quit fighting and start talking. I know that there have been attempts for talks in Doha, but we have not seen results. Now, let me first focus on this aspect, and then I will talk about the role that regional countries can play in other ways to help Afghanistan stabilize. But first, the political process and the peace process. We had expected that United States would withdraw from Afghanistan in a responsible manner. That means that the withdrawal of troops should have been accompanied by a final political settlement amongst Afghans. But that has not happened. And therefore, United States also partly takes the responsibility for the chaos that has occurred in Afghanistan and should assume its responsibility of not abandoning Afghanistan, but facilitating peace process in Afghanistan. The second aspect is that the ultimate responsibility for peace in Afghanistan lies with the Afghans themselves. Everyone agrees that it has to be an Afghan owned and Afghan led peace process. No regional country, no international player wants to interfere or intervene. And they want that the Afghans should sit and talk. The most important player in this was, of course, the Afghan government, because Afghan government is a legally legitimized, legitimate government, recognized government. But unfortunately, the Afghan government wasted a lot of time in undertaking uh, meaningful talks with the Taliban. Since February 2020, when the United States and Taliban had made a deal, there was one year and a half available to the Afghan government to take it seriously. But unfortunately, I could see that the Afghan government would put one condition or the other. And as a result, the talks have not really been uh, result oriented. The Afghan government may have its own reasons for that, 
their favorite reason is that they like to place blame on pakistan and hope that pakistan should fight taliban for them but pakistan has its own problems and is not ready to fight for them and therefore this is not a legitimate expectation they may also want united states to reengage i think united states does not want to reengage with troops it has made it very clear so the only option for afghan government is to engage in serious talks the third most important player is taliban the taliban must also give up violence and start talking because if even if taliban capture the whole of afghanistan by military force it is it is quite likely that the international community will not recognize a victory which has come through military means and not by democratic process so the taliban would also need to be flexible and create an inclusive government in afghanistan the fourth player so i started with united states then i talked about afghan government then i talked about taliban the fourth player are the regional countries the neighbors of afghanistan pakistan iran central asian republics people's republic of china and also some other players like russia and turkey who would also uh, like to play a positive role now what can the regional countries do the regional countries need to send a very clear message to both parties to afghan government as well as the taliban that we don't want to see a military solution of one kind or the other you will not be able to ensure total victory and there will be chaos all the time and therefore the regional countries would want to see that there should be a clear message to both parties that they should not resort to violence and war the second role that the regional countries can play is to facilitate the peace efforts and i think many of them are doing it for example russia has been hosting talks china has been hosting talks pakistan had offered to so it is and turkey too and therefore it is important that the regional countries continue to hold talks even pakistan had offered to host a, and all effort arrangements had been made on 16th 17th july but at the request of the afghan government it was postponed i am not part of the government but i honestly don't understand this request from afghan government because unless all regional countries facilitate peace they they there cannot be peace so now they should be happy that all regional countries actually want peace including pakistan in pakistan let me say it very clearly that there is a full consensus i am not saying large consensus i am not saying wide consensus i am saying full consensus in all facets of pakistani society that a peaceful afghanistan is good for pakistan is good for the region and therefore we would like to see peace in afghanistan we have repeatedly said that there is pakistan does not have any favorites in afghanistan and therefore it is important for afghan government to realize that this is a rare moment and they must make use of this time which is available because time is running out and they must uh, uh, now let me also address one allegation that afghan government continues to make that it is pakistan which is supporting taliban now the facts on ground and i here i am talking of uh, 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 talking on the basis of my information my talks with the military and civil authorities of pakistan 
that 90% of the fighting cadre of Taliban is in Afghanistan. And those who come here, they come here because they want to meet the refugees where their relatives live. We have been constantly saying that the refugees camps, if somebody goes across the border, just like an ordinary person and engages fighting in Afghanistan, we can't know. But when Afghan government says that there are Taliban shuras in Pakistan or Taliban training grounds, this is absurd because no one has ever seen any glimpse of any of these shuras or any of these training camps. So we, even yesterday, the foreign minister of Pakistan said that blame game will not be a good idea. So we should stop replacing blame. And some of the remarks by some Afghan leaders of the government have been preposterous, which are totally undiplomatic. And therefore, it is important uh, that Pakistan uh, is uh, looked at by the Afghan government as a friendly voice. The two countries have to live side by side forever. And there is no point in raising an issue which does not actually exist, but distracts. The focus should not be on bashing one country or the other. Focus of Afghan government should be on talks. So these are some of my ideas about the role that US and Taliban and Afghan government and all the regional players, including Pakistan, Iran, Turkey and Russia and Central Asian republics can play to facilitate peace. That's the only option. We must not waste any more time and we must engage in intra-Afghan talks right away. All our energies must be on intra-Afghan talks Otherwise, a civil war can be disastrous for the, for the region because terrorist entities like Al-Qaeda and others will come in. And there will be other problems of instability in Afghanistan. So that is my final submission to this very panel. And I'm ready for any question answers if there are any. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. For your uh, insights on the issue. You have highlighted many pertinent points. Uh, having said that war was never been an option and diplomacy was essential to solve the Afghan crisis and then irresponsible with all of US. And it's, it was the time for US to accept the responsibility of uh, abandoning Afghanistan. And then you said that the way forward would be only Afghan own and upon that process. And that you also highlighted many issues that how the Afghan government wasted a lot of time in talking to the Taliban and now it's time that it should talk with all factions seriously and should not favor any particular country and how if the Taliban continue uh, their, their, their violent tactics, the international community would never accept that. And uh, thank you very much sir, for your uh, insights. Now I will move to our next speaker who has joined us from Afghanistan. Mr. Mirwais Yasini, first deputy speaker of the lower house of the Afghan parliament. Over to you, sir. Can you hear me, sir? Um, I think there is any technical problem. I would, now I would request Dr. Gao Zitong, Director, Institute of International Strategy and Policy, University of Shanghai, to give his insights on the issue. Dr. Gao Zitong. Yeah, uh, good afternoon. I will be in Pakistan. It's good morning. <laughs> can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear you. Good. Yeah, good. Uh, first, uh, let me uh, uh, thank you, uh, thank you, uh, the, the host uh, IPI, uh, for inviting me. I'm so sorry in China we are in holiday season. I'm not sure you know like you. 
after dressing so formal with ties, or shoes, <laughs> I'm very, you know, informal. Uh, and uh, I re uh, really, you know, I'm delighted to join. And particularly, I would like to hear just uh, Ambassador Azao uh, Chiodoli. Uh, I, I really, I appreciate your points. I, your, your, your first speech here uh, remind me that how important uh, this topic uh, is also not to Pakistan itself, but also to, to China. Uh, even in holiday season, uh, as a professor of uh, university, I'm from Shanghai, you know, I really, you know, also uh, pay attention to the development uh, situation of uh, Afghanistan and how other countries uh, think about this and got some news. But uh, I'm so sorry that uh, because it's a holiday season, I didn't take too much time on that topic, <laughs> but uh, just the following the most news on that. I would like to uh, uh, talk uh, as the topic is uh, here is Afghanistan uh, kind of draw on regional quest of a peace and stability. I really think this topic is very important because from uh, uh, China's view uh, as a Chinese, uh, I'm not sure representing the Chinese government, you know, <laughs> I rest represent them myself. Uh, I think that not only China, but also uh, Pakistan, Iran, all the neighbors, uh, including I think Af Afghanistan itself, uh, we take the peace and the development uh, as the same goal. Uh, we appreciate and really we uh, finally, for the last 20 years, I think, as this critical moment, all these countries, I think the main goal of all we share, the same goal as its critical moments. I rest why I appreciate Ambassador Chudley the points that the, the peace, we need peaceful peace talk, we need the political solutions as uh, uh, of the Afghanistan uh, situation, the, the, the issue here. So I would like to uh, talk us uh, three points. First, uh, how we think about the Afghanistan uh, civil war. If you look at uh, the, the civil war in Afghanistan now itself between the government and, uh, and Taliban, and uh, the situation changed dramatically when the US declared the withdrawal of its military troops and also the, the NATO troops. So, all the country's neighbors are really, I think, uh, worrying about this. A hasty withdrawal of the US troops and left are uh, uh, so, I think, is a mess uh, of a situation here uh, with no, I mean, like the ambassador children mentioned, with no solution, with no political solution settlements for Afghanistan for the regional countries because of the US history military uh, uh, withdrawal from here. So how this US action military uh, 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 to, no, withdrawal bring a new kind of uh, situation to the region? This is what I have in, the, in short term at least, we have to think about this. We have to do that first is the peaceful solution. We can find the multiple, multiple, multiple uh, languages uh, in Afghanistan itself uh, to talk with uh, non-military means. Is it possible? Uh, if you look at the, you know, pragmatically, it's very hard. So uh, frankly, the, the civil war, I think we continue. Nobody actually can stop. This is the reality. So for China as a professor of international relations, I always look at the, something as a, as a, realism, uh, a realist. Something you cannot just uh, imagine that we can do something that without uh, any, with uh, the groundless uh, points or ideas. So the first is how we think about the, the military situation here in Afghanistan. 
if we imagine that uh, how the Taliban will play more important role or positive role, if we expect it, how we think about the new situation later, that they can do a political a conciliation or peaceful talks. So I need, I think as we, I think uh, from my point of view, we need a certain time to look at the new changes. At least I think in short, so quite a few months. So here, I would like to mention that uh, from my point of view, uh, we have the same goal that uh, we need the peace and development in Afghanistan. But it's, it's in short term, we have to find a way and that how we reach that goal uh, after this military kind of uh, uh, fight or conflict in itself. And at the same time, I will talk about uh, that in the third point, that how the, uh, the, 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 the countries uh, outside of this region, as we mentioned that like uh, USA, like Russia, like Turkey, maybe also India. I think the more outside forces involved, the situation will be more complicated. That's what China will have learned the lesson. We have, the, we have a lot of lessons we have learned in the past uh, one decade, I think, uh, uh, one century, I think, in terms of Chinese history, in terms of Chinese neighboring uh, situation. We have learned a lot, a lot of lessons from that, that the more countries involved, the situation will be more, we, we cannot find uh, uh, the more difficult to find a solution. That's why, I, from my point of view, we all think about it. I think the Chinese government, also, I obviously talk about the, the anti-terrorism, the U.S. military involvement, even after its withdrawal, how we think about the U.S. role it will play. The U.S. will play a responsible role after the withdrawal of troops. Think about this. Think about the China-U.S. situation, the, 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 the uh, com competition. So how we think is, you know, very good imagination of, of Afghanistan after U.S. troops, how we think a military solution, uh, a military uh, uh, kind of non-military solution immediately? I don't think so. So the first thing I think, I will repeat my point is the political solution, the political talk, I think you have to happen after this military in civil, the civil war, at least, uh, can you know settle down. We can find a new opportunity. I think we take time. That's my first point. The second, I just mentioned. I would like to elaborate it. My point is, all China, Pakistan, Iran, and all the neighbors. I think of Afghanistan. We share the same goal that we want. Afghanistan to be peaceful, to be a, a, a developing country, can be on the focus on economic development. I think for the last uh, 50 years, even if you look at the, even the, 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 uh, the Cold War era, this is the time that all the neighbors will want the same goal, as I mentioned just now. But now how we do that? So my second point is, how we think about is there's a the immediate task for the neighbors for Afghanistan. You know, is is uh, for for Afghanistan. If you look at the uh, past uh, from the Cold War era, Afghanistan is regarded as a grave. In in China, it was mentioned that the war that quoted from the West uh, is the grave. Uh, uh, Massive grave for empires, you know, <laughs> yeah, a tomb, you know, for the so more involves the military, uh, foreign, uh, inv military involvement in that would be terrible, it's a disaster. And China, I believe, China will be very careful to deal with that. And Russia also, you know. so that's why the US withdraw from the military troops there from there. Because really a, a big a military, a political 
an economic burden uh, for big powers. So now the, the, the big task, I think now is on the, on the shoulder of regional powers, regional countries, neighboring countries at least, uh, like China, Pakistan, Iran. So we share this goal. So now we do first is how we find the solution. I agree with uh, uh, Ambassador Chudley is that Taliban, the military forces there, and others, you know, like the uh, uh, Afghan government. I think it first is uh, how these internal forces with the neighboring uh, uh, kind of political uh, suggestions or any involvement or you will give them you know, help that to find a new kind of a, a political framework that can find a way to reach a peaceful and uh, 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 and a long term a peaceful settlement for Afghanistan. That take time. That means more multilateral cooperation among its neighbors, China, Pakistan, and Iran. I believe that uh, these three countries, I think a strong force and uh, can play more stronger role in bringing these political settlements. I don't, I'm not, I cannot have a high expectation of USA. I don't think so. I don't have the high expectation of uh, uh, Turkey involved in this region. If you look at the kind of history from a historical view, I don't expect that India will involve that, so we bring more peace. So all this China, Pakistan, and Iran with the internal Afghan forces, this more multilateral talk runs after another to talk about it, to find a solution. Then for the uh, post-war uh, economic uh, and, 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 and infrastructure building process, I think it will be more, uh, will be a find, uh, uh, find a way. Let's say it's urgent. I think the short term is urgent. Uh, my third point is, I always think about the outsiders. With no doubt, the outsiders like the USA, like Russia, like Turkey, they are involved, they have been involved in that, including India. They have been involved a lot there. You back to the Cold War, back to the Afghanistan war in the last 20 years, the US military troops, the US CIA, the US lots, they're, they involved uh, really deeply, more deeper than China. I think. So how we think about this, so who is really responsible? As a, is the USA, the military troops from Afghanistan, it's really, really show the US is not responsible, it's not a responsible country. It should say that if it wants, if it's withdraw military troops, that first to, to bring a political and a really a, a, a political settlement for Afghan country. For Afghan, Afghan people. No, we didn't see that. It's a failure of US troops. The problem is the US is a, is a non responsible country. He's just the left. He wants to leave his mess to these countries. This is not responsible. So, how we expect it's the USA will do or re, as a play a responsible role in? Post the Cold War, a Cold War, uh, impose the Civil War, Afghanistan. How about uh, Turkey? Turkey now wants to involve more uh, militarily uh, to bring troops in Afghanistan. Turkey is far from this region. What's the why? China is thinking about the why. You have to think about why uh, so far US is leaving. Uh, European countries, uh, Germany is leading, Turkey won't involve it. It's very far. What's, why? I, well, I have, from, my, from my point of view, I, I, don't, I don't get it. You know? So, 
how about the Russia? Russia is a country, you know, we take always, if you look at the history from Cold War, the Central Asia countries with neighbors with Afghanistan. I think because the, the Cold War situation, because the, the former Soviet Union, the history of the Soviet Union. So the Russia with China and we have the Shanghai Cooperation Organization uh, uh, here is regional uh, uh, organization to bring this uh, peace pillar uh, uh, for this region, so it's it's more can be is reasonable if you accept it because all even I believe Russia also want a peaceful Central Asia in terms of Afghanistan situation. So China and Russia also uh, if we play a, a more important role. It means don't want the Afghan Afghan situation uh, destabilize this region. So next, how about India? India and China and Pakistan, we have the uh, CPEC disputes. The U India regard is uh, is a violation of its you know it's it involves its its sovereignty because of the CPEC because of the Kashmir. So does really that uh, India can play the, the responsible role? in Afghanistan, the post the civil war. So there's a lot of unstable, uncertain factors. So the, what I mean, I, I don't judge how they do uh, in the future. I don't want to say that they do badly or something good. I just say more country involved from outsiders the situation is more complicated, so that kind of we find the more difficult sort of difficulties there. So, uh, so, like, so when we talk about the regional, this topic today is is the regional uh, uh, quest for peace and prep uh, the stability, particularly from Chinese, from Pakistan's, from Iran's. Uh, perspectives. How we really have to be able to think about the, how the, the outsiders really can we bring more, really hope more countries involved in this region, bring peace. We have the lessons from the Cold War. We have lessons from the last 20 years because the US involved in that. So I have this three points that uh, we, we can share, I share with you, and uh, maybe uh, some of you. Uh, point that you disagree with me, but uh, here is my 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 personal ideas and my personal understanding of Afghanistan situation. And I really hope that uh, we need more uh, uh, this kind of dialogue uh, in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Bao, for your insights on the issues. Uh, your highlighted many pertinent points. He says, peace in Afghanistan is a common goal for all regional states, and there was a need to find to find a way to reach this goal. And for definitely, military solution was never an option. And there is a need to form a political consensus for a lasting peaceful settlement of one crisis. And Pakistan, Iran, and China have more responsibility than other regional states because the U.S. has lost the moral leverage when it abandoned Afghanistan in the West. Thank you very much for your remarks, sir. Now we will move to our next speaker, Mirwais Yasini, who is first deputy speaker of the lower house of the Afghan parliament. Sir, Mirwais Yasini, over to you, sir. Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning. Sorry for being late because of some technical issues for me, but uh, it's a privilege to be part of this uh, distinguished uh, panel and program. Uh, well, I would like to be Frank, nowadays what is going on in Afghanistan and uh, what is its reverse effect on uh, the region and uh, particularly uh, on our neighbors. Uh, first of all, I'm representing my people. I'm not representing uh, the government of Afghanistan, uh, neither the government nor the uh, Taliban. 
but as I'm uh, people representative, so I have to reflect the view of my people or what is going on candidly, honestly, and frankly. The situation of the ground is very well attired in what we are uh, perceiving and or what we are getting in, in, in the news. Uh, there are fighting in more than dozen fronts in Afghanistan and actually the, 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 the civilians are suffering. They're suffering in Kunduz, they're suffering in uh, Saripol, and they're suffering in Iraq, they're suffering mainly in Lashkarga, Farah, and Kandahar. Hundreds of thousands of people are uh, getting refuge. Uh, there are short, uh, shortage of food, shortage of water, shortage of shelter, and uh, even the hospitals are not able to accommodate anymore the, 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 the war uh, wounded uh, people there. The casualties are extremely high, extremely high. No doubt the United States has invested uh, tens of billions of dollars, if it's not hundreds, on the civil development in Afghanistan for the past 20 years. Uh, I doubt that the or our immediate neighbor is the subject of the, 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 the conference of the webinar today will be able to invest uh, tens of billions of dollars. So Afghanistan will face for the next decade or two or three, uh, very bad situation and calamity, unfortunately. And before we go, uh, in order to rebuild Afghanistan, in order to get the connectivity, in order to get the, the, the uh, transit and all the facilities, uh, I doubt if it can, uh, if we can, even get it with the current phase of the violence which is going in Afghanistan. The more it goes, the more uh, they take away our goals from us, which is the peace, connectivity, and, 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 and prior to that, honestly, uh, the spillover of the war will come uh, to the region and immediately to our neighbors that we do see in the past one week or two days or two weeks uh, what is going on, unfortunately, as well as in Pakistan, the terrorist attacks, the continuity of the war, the, the war will all get immediate and direct threats of terrorism and, 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 and uh, insecurity to our immediate neighbors. That will also go uh, to the north because they are all in Afghanistan, uh, the northern, uh, I, I do mean the Uzbek, the Tajiks, the Chechens, uh, movements are there, are still in Afghanistan, Daesh is there, TTP is there. So if you don't care the uh, issue soon, uh, sooner than later, we will have to pay the price, unfortunately. And that is a, a, a very unwanted, uh, will be unwanted uh, scenario. What I'm trying to say, uh, immediately the ceasefire has to, to, to be announced in Afghanistan. Well, I don't care uh, what will be the mood of opponent day, who will take what, what slot will get the government, what slot will get the Taliban. But what I'm keen that, that, that we, can, we can stop uh, the bloodshed in Afghanistan, which is dreadfully uh, uh, going on in Afghanistan. We do appreciate it, uh, our neighbors in the international community, particularly Pakistan, Iran, China's role in the peace, but, but, this is a very big, but that's not enough. That has to be rapid, that has to be, that, that has to be a workable. Uh, well, I've heard that today or tomorrow and the day after, two important conferences are coming up in Qatar uh, that all, uh, related countries are representing there, that they have to be proactive on both sides, government in the Taliban, and uh, try to uh, find out a solution. We couldn't do it. We didn't invite the American in the 2001. We didn't invite the, 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 the uh, Russian in 
1979-27 December, the war was always imposed on us, uh, either in one forum or on other forums. And uh, there, 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 the, the, the capability of the, the, the national uh, stamina and thinking was taken away from Afghans. In, in, in Afghan are subject to the invasion and still subject to the internal and external fighting. I totally agree with our colleagues from China, the professor, that the United States is, we got out and we didn't invite them. We came to Afghanistan, we said you know, war on terror um, and, 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 and we said we achieved it. And uh, we know what have happened in due course of the history. What I'm trying to say, if you could do not contain this war in Afghanistan, this calamity in Afghanistan, we are in different age. 40 years back, when this was era of Cold War, and there was not internet age, that was not electronic media age, that was not telephone and Skype and WhatsApp in you name it, those age. Now, with that things, the terrorism will also go speedily, uh, unfortunately, to our regional countries and then to the international community and nobody will save. So the sooner the better. It is two poll. One is positive poll. The positive poll is that we could get connectivity, we get bread out of Afghanistan, our, and our, uh, our regional uh, countries, people, that's good case scenario. But the bad case scenario will be God forbid that we will be subjected, as we are subjected to the violence today, we, the, our, our, our brothers around uh, Afghanistan will be subjected to the, uh, the, the same experience that we are going through now in Afghanistan. So I do thank you very much. If there is any question, I'll be here to answer. And again, I'm sorry for the delay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, <clears throat> for your um, remarks on the issue. Uh, you believe that civilians will be the ultimate victims of the ongoing violence, and you express your concerns about the spillover of the Afghan war in its immediate neighbors. And you believe that an emergency uh, ceasefire should be announced to bring a halt to the prevalent bloodshed in Afghanistan. And you think that the role played by regional countries is laudable, but it is not enough. Thank you very much for your uh, remarks. Uh, now I will move to our next speaker, who is Dr. Um, what is the Associate Professor at Faculty of World Studies, University of Tehran. Uh, can you hear me? I hope you can hear me. Yes, sir. I can hear you. Okay, very good. I think you changed the order of the speakers, so I was not uh, I was not ready for you, but that's uh, that's okay. Thank you very much uh, uh, for the invitation, and uh, obviously, the subject of uh, your uh, webinar today is very important uh, for Afghanistan and its uh, neighbors. Um, I benefited from the talks of uh, Mr. Chowdhury and Professor Guan uh, and our uh, uh, friend from Afghanistan, Mr. Yossini. And I hope that uh, what I'm going to say today is going to contribute to uh, uh, understanding what's going on uh, with regard to the current situation. I have prepared uh, 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 little uh, PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to do share a screen. Uh, if you can activate uh, my share screen, you can see, uh, can you, the host needs to, it says host disabled participant share screen. Can you uh, let me do share screen? If not, I'll just read from my PowerPoint. Okay. If 
if you cannot, I will just read from it. If you cannot uh, unlock my... It's fine, you can read from the PowerPoint. Okay, so let me just uh, read from my PowerPoint here. Uh, with regard to Iran's, obviously, as, as the host said, I'm uh, Fuad Izadi, I'm associate professor at the Faculty of World Studies, University of Tehran. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, Iran's perspective with uh, the current situation in Afghanistan. Uh, I believe uh, Iran has four uh, major political and security goals in Afghanistan. The first goal is to collaborate with uh, President Ashraf Ghani uh, without abandoning supports for other Afghan allies. As you know, um, Iran is a neighbor of uh, Afghanistan. And uh, throughout uh, the last uh, 40 some years uh, has tried uh, to help uh, Afghan, Afghanistani brothers and sisters to uh, overcome the difficulties that the country has been going through <clears throat> dating back uh, to the invasion of Afghanistan uh, in uh, the 19. Uh, uh, 70s and 1980s uh, by the Soviet Union. Um, so since that time, Iran supported uh, a number of uh, Mujahideen organizations in their fight against the Soviet invasion. Uh, so Iran's uh, relationship with different uh, political parties and different uh, organizations and groups is uh, quite extensive uh, and uh, has been going on for uh, many decades. Uh, and the basic idea is to support the uh, internationally recognized government in Kabul and also work with uh, other uh, uh, Afghan allies to achieve uh, uh, mutual uh, goals that uh, uh, Iran has and, and uh, Iran's allies have in Afghanistan. So that's number one goal that Iran has. The second goal is to avoid direct confrontation with the United States and ensure that Afghanistan is not used to attack Iran. As uh, all of you know, uh, US-Iran relations are not uh, in, in a good shape. Uh, the United States is uh, confronting Iran militarily, economically, politically. Um, uh, US and its allies, including Israel, are killing Iranian scientists and uh, causing a lot of uh, problems for uh, Iran attacking uh, Iranian ships and uh, other things that you know. <clears throat> and the goal that Iran has in Afghanistan is uh, to make sure that Afghanistan is not used as a base uh, to attack uh, Iran, which is uh, obviously a legitimate uh, concern. Uh, and uh, when the United States announced that the US um, is going to leave uh, its troops from Afghanistan. Uh, this was more or less a welcome news. As one of the speakers earlier said, uh, Iran uh, wanted uh, a responsible exit of the United States uh, because uh, a responsible exit would uh, lead to chaos. And uh, chaos is not good for anyone, uh, including Iran. Uh, but the ultimate uh, goal of uh, making sure that uh, U.S. is not in Afghanistan uh, forever uh, was one of Iran's goals. Uh, and um, because of that reason, there are reports that uh, Iran um, occasionally uh, helped uh, the Taliban in their fight against uh, the United States. Now, these are unconfirmed reports. Iran uh, has not uh, confirmed this report, and uh, Taliban also uh, have not confirmed this report. Yeah, but the reports that Iran has been uh, helping uh, Taliban in their fight against uh, the United States, not in their fight against uh, other people or the uh, central government. <laughs> and uh, uh, one thing that uh, Iranian officials uh, realized uh, some years ago was that uh, the Taliban uh, is a fact uh, in uh, Afghanistan uh, and uh, 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 because of security uh, concerns, uh, the uh, Iranian officials uh, wanted to make sure that there is some level of working relationship with Taliban 
uh, as you know, the last time Taliban was in power, Iran uh, was very close in uh, attacking Afghanistan after uh, Iranian diplomats were uh, murdered by the Taliban uh, uh, during that uh, time period. Uh, so given that experience and given the fact that Iran does not want to be fighting its neighbors, including Afghanistan, uh, establishing some sort of working relationship with Afghanistan was important. And since uh, Iran's goal was to make sure that Afghanistan does not enter into a civil war because of many reasons, including the fact that Iran doesn't need more refugees from Afghanistan, uh, Iran needed to have some level of working relationship with all uh, parties in Afghanistan to, to help with uh, national reconciliation and uh, uh, finding a political solution. As uh, our brother Chaudhry said, uh, Afghanistan doesn't have a military solution. And this is that uh, should have been recognized many decades ago. If all parties in Afghanistan realized that very fact, you would not have uh, 40 years of conflict and war in that country. So that's, uh, that's a very true uh, statement. And, something that is missing in the conversation as we go forward. So that is the second goal, making sure that the U.S. doesn't behave uh, uh, in, in manners that Iran is, in, is not in line with Iran's uh, national interest. Uh, the second goal, the third goal that uh, Iran has been uh, following in Afghanistan is uh, to invest in Afghanistan uh, reconstruction. Uh, and Iran has done a lot of that as much as Iran could. Obviously, there are limitations on Iran's uh, budget uh, for this type of uh, projects. But in the past, especially when Iran's economy uh, was doing better and sanctions were less, uh, uh, Iran did invest extensively in infrastructure in <laughs> Afghanistan. The one goal that Iran has had is to uh, make sure that uh, the refugees that are in Iran from Afghanistan, and there are about one and a half million refugees, uh, that they can go back to uh, the country. Uh, and in order for that to happen, Afghanistan needs to be able to uh, provide services to its people, including people who have left Afghanistan. So one reason that Iran uh, invested in uh, reconstruction in Afghanistan was that one hope that uh, Iran has is that uh, for countries like China, that know how to do uh, reconstruction and uh, have also the financial resources to do so, to be more active in Afghanistan. Uh, and uh, so uh, overall, uh, uh, in, in a, in, in, uh, this could be a project of uh, Iran, uh, that Afghanistan's neighboring countries invest in Afghanistan's reconstruction. Uh, and uh, so that is, that is going to be a goal that uh, I think should be uh, uh, should should be followed. The fourth uh, a goal that uh, Iran has uh, is to reduce and, if possible, stop the flow of narcotics to uh, Iran. As you know, uh, uh, after uh, you know, since since uh, 2001, since Americans invaded Afghanistan, the production of drugs in Afghanistan actually increased uh, many folds, and these drugs uh, want to go to Europe. Uh, and they pass through Afghanistan and Turkey uh, in, in order for them to reach Europe. <clears throat> and uh, some of the drugs uh, remain in Iran as, as they pass through, and that's obviously not good for Iran. So the issue of the problem with drugs, drug production in Afghanistan is obviously something that's very concerning for Iran. And uh, uh, as, uh, and that's one of the reasons Iran needs peace and is uh, sort of established government in Afghanistan. Because if you have civil war and chaos, uh, then anybody can grow drugs and narcotics. Uh, and that's, that's obviously not good for Afghanistan and not good for its uh, neighbors. <clears throat> so overall, uh, Iran is hoping for a revival in uh, three areas. So the, uh, the first portion of my talk was uh, Iran's four major political and security goals in Afghanistan. That's four. Now I'm going to do three uh, uh, revivals. Uh, uh, one revival is going to be, and this is the hope that Iran has, and 
Iran is working towards that is economic revival. <coughs> economic revival of the region boosted by new, uh, renewed relations between Iran, Pakistan, India, and China could provide new opportunities for jobs and prosperity in Afghanistan through trade and transition. Uh, and obviously, you know that uh, Iran is working with uh, the Chabahar project. Uh, the conclusion of the Chabahar agreement uh, gives access to markets in Afghanistan and Central Asia and provides a trade link between Afghanistan and Central Asia with Europe uh, and the Middle East. So one reason that Iran was interested in Chabahar was to <coughs> make sure that uh, uh, Afghanistan uh, can access uh, international markets and, and as you have more prosperity in Afghanistan, uh, you, you, you will have a better country uh, after all. As you know, Iran is uh, Afghanistan's number one trading partner. Um, and the, the, the trade between Iran and Afghanistan is about $2 billion. And that's also important for Iran economically because of sanctions. Um, uh, working with its uh, neighbors is going to be a priority for Iran. And as you know, this week we have a new president, uh, Dr. Raisi. And one of the themes that uh, he has uh, talked about in his campaign uh, is uh, to make sure that Iran uh, does more with its neighbors and improve relations with neighbors, including economic relations. Uh, the previous government, the Rouhani administration, Focus, uh, focused on uh, improving relations with the West and uh, sort of resolving problems with the United States. That obviously didn't work out and uh, the, the nuclear agreement is not in a good shape. And so the new government is um, uh, changing priorities in foreign policy and one priority is going to be working with neighbors. So Afghanistan, Pakistan, other Iran's neighbors are going to be more important in the next four years, at least, as the new government takes uh, shape in Iran. <clears throat> so that was the first uh, economic revival. The second security revival, uh, constructive engagement in solving the major security threats in the region, such as uh, illicit trans, uh, transnational trade, especially drug trafficking and violent extremism. Ex extremism. As you know, uh, Afghanistan is being uh, occupied by elements of Daesh. Um, some, some of uh, Daesh uh, uh, forces have moved from Syria to Afghanistan and they are engaging in terrorism. They are targeting the Shia population in Kabul and uh, elsewhere. Uh, and that's uh, not good for Afghanistan. Uh, just, uh, just a few months ago, they um, attacked a girl's uh, school, Imam Hussein, uh, uh, primary school for girls in Kabul that resulted in uh, uh, tens of uh, uh, young uh, ladies' deaths. Uh, Daesh obviously is a terrorist organization and uh, one security concern Iran has is to make sure that Daesh does not uh, have a home in Afghanistan and that's another reason Iran it does not welcome a civil war in Afghanistan because <clears throat> when you have a civil war, any organization can uh, go and uh, take, uh, take a portion of the country and do whatever they want. Uh, so the security revival is going to be a concern for Iran. Investing in alternative crops and new economic opportunities for border communities is also going to be important. Obviously, uh, Iran is uh, concerned about the immediate border between Iran and Afghanistan. And as you know, in the last few weeks, uh, Taliban has taken most of the border areas between Iran and Afghanistan. They have taken over uh, trade uh, uh, links and uh, uh, trading cities between the uh, two countries. And uh, obviously that's going to affect trade between Iran and Afghanistan. The last uh, portion of my talk, the last revival is going to be cultural. Uh, revival, reviving the common cultural heritage of uh, a region formerly known as Greater uh, Khorasan could be uh, set in coordination to the association of name Khorasan today. Uh, so the, as you know, there are a lot of uh, cultural uh, links between the people of this region. Iran Af and uh, uh, most people in Afghanistan say, uh, share a common language. 
uh, we speak uh, Farsi, they speak Dari, which is very close. <laughs> and uh, obviously the religious links, uh, all uh, the two countries are overwhelmingly Muslim countries. Uh, so increasing these cultural uh, links is going to be uh, another uh, objective that Iran has. So my PowerPoint ends with a poetry. Uh, I'm sorry you couldn't see the PowerPoint, but uh, uh, I have a, a Farsi poetry from Ghalib who is a famous uh, Indian uh, poet, uh, 1797. He passed away in 1869. So I'm going to read it and, and I'm going to translate it. Uh, this is in Farsi. He says, Junoonat gar be nafs khud tamam ast, ze kashi ta be kashan neem gam ast. And the translation is, once we make up our mind, the distance between kashi and kashan is only half a step. Uh, Kashan is a city in Iran and Kashi is a city in today's India. So what Ghalib is saying is that instead of fighting, uh, let's uh, make peace. And once we make up our mind on making peace, then the distance between uh, cities and distance between people uh, will go away. So thank you very much again for the invitation. Uh, and uh, uh, I hope that uh, IPI will continue its uh, great work as it continues to uh, prosper. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Fouad uh, um, You highlighted different goals of the Iranian government that how we would support President Bashar Khani without confronting <coughs> other allies and how it is aiming at avoiding any confrontation with the US so that one land is not used against Iran. And then you again reiterated the point, which was also highlighted by our uh, previous speakers that um, there is no military solution to the Afghan crisis, as Iran worries about the flow of a new wave of Afghan refugees if the situation further deteriorates. And then there are concerns about drug production in Afghanistan. And, uh, and then you said President Raisi will keep Afghanistan and Pakistan more important as it as his administration is paying close attention to regional issues. And then um, you are, the Iranian government is also worried about the increasing cold wars of Daesh in, um, in Afghanistan. And then you talk about security matters through border management. And your last point about cultural revival between the region and Muslim states was very important. So thank you very much for your insights. Now I will move to our um, Last speaker who has joined us from Turkey, Dr. Murat Aslan, who is a faculty member of Hassan Kalyanchi University and researcher in Pisa. Over to you, sir. Dr. Murat Aslan. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, it's really an honor for me to present my ideas in a distinguished event like this. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, I will be very quick because I know that we have a limited time. You know, uh, there is there are sometimes gaps in international politics just because military escalations, political turmoils, etc. For instance, if you go through Iraq and Syria, Daesh tried to fill a vacuum that was like a gap. Well, there was the reaction. On the other hand, if you go through the other fields like international law, the rules are clear though states tend to fill the gaps in the laws, in the regulations. And in Afghanistan, I think we are going to experience and we, we are experiencing the same, the same thing. There's a gap right now after the withdrawal of the United States. Doesn't matter how ethical it was in 2001, but there's a fact on the ground. Now there's a gap and somebody else will fill it. Well, at the first glance, it's Taliban. That's correct. But Taliban is usually or will be perceived as an apparatus maybe in the coming period. <clears throat> so uh, I think we should check and balance and review exactly the discourse of the conflict in the coming days. If Taliban could be an apparatus for another state or not, either at the regional level or global level, because the essential issue in such conflicts is the legitimacy as Ambassador Chaudhry uh, delineated. And unfortunately, 
Taliban is gaining ground in terms of legitimacy. For instance, they are a party in Doha. Most states are having talks with them. There are some statements of Europeans that Taliban may be a credible actor in Afghanistan. And finally, we witnessed a picture of Taliban leadership in Beijing, China, that they are just they were just like a statesman. So that means the stake of legitimacy is eroding day by day. That, that's the fact. Second thing is the perception. Who perceives the other or self? In what manner? Well, Taliban perceives itself as weaker after the withdrawal of the United States. Well, China perceives Afghan ground as a gap that they can easily fill to ensure the security of Eastern Turkestan. Well, Russia perceives Afghanistan somewhere that they can manage by means of the neighboring countries at the north. Well, you can go beyond. On the other hand, there's one important thing. If this perception, attitude, or trend is not linked with each other, that means we will meet different egos conflicting with each other. And if you add the local dynamics in Afghanistan, then we will meet some scenarios that I will delineate uh, in a few minutes. So in accordance with the perception, I think what we need is consistency. <clears throat> consistency of the actors in Afghanistan, consistency of the international uh, community, and consistency in words and deeds. And I think this motivation will just break Taliban's quest to dominate the overall Afghanistan. If there is an inconsistency that Taliban can easily exploit it, that's one issue that I want to delineate. Well, after all, I want to ask three questions that is critical. The first one is who's capable of what? The second one is what projections, what projections we may face, the least of projections. And third, how can we push the actors to peace? How? That's the major question. Well, everybody wishes peace and reconciliation in Afghanistan, but how? That's the issue. The first one, who is capable of what? If you go through Taliban, they are capable of building authority in the rural areas and small cities of Afghanistan. Kabul is somewhere that they can't manage by themselves. Second thing, the neighboring countries do want to have a peaceful Afghanistan though. They are not that much strong enough to intervene Afghanistan in terms of politics, in terms of security. If you go through the United States, well, they lost many things by withdrawing their troops and their capacity and capability, which is at the global level, that's devastating. Now, it's, it has gone. They lost a base in the heart of Asia and I think this strategic fault will bring many other problems in future in the coming century. Afghan national security forces and Afghan government, well, okay, for, for the Afghan government, there may be many allegations. For instance, they could not conclude the elections but inked memorandums to conclude it. The allegations of corruption is widespread, that's correct. But whatever the problem is, it's the Afghan people that will question the eligibility of Afghan government. So I can extend the list in terms of who's capable of what. On the other hand, there are two issues that I want to emphasize. It's first radicalism and second being a safe heaven to unwanted networks in the globe. If it will be a failure 
in Afghanistan. The biggest threat for the region and international community is radicalism and extremism. They can easily pass it to Pakistan, to Iran, and in the meantime, to China, and also Uzbekistan. So this is the first danger that we all have to think about. And second thing, being a safe haven. Well, Al-Qaeda was in Afghanistan, and still Al-Qaeda exists like a virus. So whenever Afghanistan is weak, international community is not determined, we will face another version of Al-Qaeda. So Afghanistan, under the authority of a probable Taliban government, well, we will face the same thing as we have used to. What projections? I have three in my mind. I will publish it through Strategic Research Center of the Foreign Ministry in the coming week. The most dangerous one, as you have delineated, is the civil war. But that type of civil war, once the legitimate government collapses, is something beyond the imagination. That means Uzbeks and Turkomans at the north, Tajiks, Pashtuns, and local formerly uh, you know, attacked warlords or power brokers will try to establish their own ground in the overall country. That means a civil war will target each other from all sides. And that's the danger. And that type of civil war has a potential to defuse the other countries in the region. Another one, this is the most likely division of Afghanistan. That means Taliban will reign upon the rural and the small cities, and Afghan government, if not isolated, the Afghan government will stay in Kabul and the major cities. Well, it's not a good scenario though. And finally, the most favorable one is peace and reconciliation. But if the self-perception of Taliban is reviewed as weaker, I think they will not tend for a peace as far as they capture further cities and districts in Afghanistan. So there must be something done, and it's the next question, to urge Taliban that they must reconciliate. So how can we push them? That's the issue. The strength of Taliban is religious sentiments, even though they are not, they cannot be validated. There must be a firm stance of clerics in Afghanistan, in Pakistan, and at the other regions to declare that Taliban's way is not good. Second thing, legitimization. No single country, including China, should have a consultation with Taliban unless they agree on peace and reconciliation. If you legitimize them, even one single country, then yes, they will stand. And third, it must not be statesmen, but intelligence services that will fight with Taliban. Intelligence services should be active on the ground, but with a collaboration. I do indicate regional collaboration. And finally, the will of the Afghan people is much more important than anything else. There must be a type of push to Afghan people that they will react because Taliban's practice on the ground are not tolerable for a single human. And finally, I will end right now, Turkey's role. Well, uh, Professor Guo said Turkey is too far. What does Turkey want to do? Well, the glue that we can claim for Turkey and the region is the shared civilization. 
China is a different civilization. Europe is a different civilization. Afghanistan, Pakistan, Turkey, Iran, we share the same civilization. So that's why Turkey is over there and was over there in 1920s. Second thing, Turkey does not claim to increase a military presence, to have a combat mission, but continue to protect the international airport and Taliban opposes, why? Because isolation of the government of Afghanistan, either through land or air, then no government in Kabul. Second thing, international community should have a touch with the Afghan public, and it's the only Kabul airport that will provide it. So Turkish mission that is projected is not to fight against the Taliban. Another issue, Turkey wants to assume responsibility if all parties in Afghanistan agrees on it. If neither of them says, no, we don't want, that means no mission, because this is a peace operation. This is a peace mission. So consent of all is important. Otherwise, Turkish role will diminish in short period. Thank you so much for your patience. repeat the question yes. shortly please because Turkey has offered the Afghan government to protect Kabul airport it has if the Taliban Turkey has been giving sanctuary to Rashid Dostum and Uzbek warlord who is considered an old enemy of the Taliban what implications this could have on Afghan's internal security many believe it to be a part of Turkey's pan Turkism ideology of supporting the Uzbeks who are Thank you. Well, uh, the relations of Turkey with Russian Dostum is usually exaggerated. For instance, is there any unit of Rashid Dostum trained and equipped in Turkey? No. It's Afghan forces. Is there any units of Rashid Dostum at the north of Afghanistan? trained and equipped and also coordinated by Turkey? No. So the identity of Rashid Dostum as Uzbek Turk is usually claimed as a base for the relation of, the relation of Turkey and Uzbeks in the region. And that's really false because the perception of Afghans in Turkish mind does not depend on ethnicity. Well, I had been to Afghanistan twice and served for more than a year. I can't defer Tajik, Pashtun, or Uzbek, or Hazara. And I have never asked it to any 
single citizen of Afghanistan who they are in terms of ethnicity or sect. So this rule applies to all Turks. We are not interested in a significant segment of Afghan society, but all, that's the issue. And in 1920s and 30s, when Turkish soldiers, teachers, professors were in Afghanistan, nobody questioned. I have reviewed all, but all documents in Turkish archives. There is no single one that claims an ethnicity of an Af Afghan. That's really important to delineate. Thank you. Thank you, Emma, sir. Um, for your remarks on the question. Uh, we have another question uh, from Mr. Usman Zia from IPI. He asked Dr. Fuad Jisani that Indian exter external affairs minister Jay Shankar's visit to Tehran to attend Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi's inauguration saw Iran's new leader praising Indian role in establishing security in Afghanistan, which might signal that these two are considering aligning with Kabul against the Taliban. Will India and Iran ally with Kabul against the Taliban? How Iran sees the rise of the Taliban? You know, as you know, uh, Iran's foreign policy is uh, has a basic uh, idea, live and let live. So reducing uh, tensions uh, regionally, uh, working with the neighbors and the countries that want to work with Iran uh, is going to be uh, important in Iran's foreign policy. So historically, as you know, Iran has uh, tried to have very good relations with Pakistan and very good relations with India and very good relations with Turkey and very good relations with China. Uh, Iran. Uh, is not interested in the idea of uh, uh, civil, uh, war of civilizations. Uh, Huntington's uh, uh, ideas are not welcomed in uh, Iran. Uh, so Iran sees, for example, an important role for China uh, as Iran confronts the United States. Uh, China, Iran's relations uh, need to improve and as you know, uh, Iran and China um, signed a 25-year uh, agreement just a few months ago when a Chinese foreign minister was in Iran. Um, Iran wants to uh, also develop its relations, as I said, with uh, all neighbors. Uh, uh, and uh, Iran's enemy, for now at least, uh, is the United States and Israel. Uh, and uh, this is going to influence uh, Iran's uh, decision decision making process, uh, and as the United States uh, uh, leaves uh, Afghanistan, at least uh, on the ground, uh, they are bombing a lot of places as we speak. But uh, at least the, the ground forces of the United States, a portion of them, uh, they're, they're going to keep some forces in Kabul. But in uh, in other parts of Afghanistan, are going to leave. Um, Iran needs to. Uh, uh, make sure that uh, the vacuum that is created is not taken over by terrorist organizations. Uh, so uh, working with Pakistan and India and China uh, and uh, Turkey and uh, Russia and other neighbors is going to be important because there is a shared interest. Um, uh, and as you saw today, people from the different countries uh, uh, said basically the same thing that they don't want uh, to see um, a civil war in Afghanistan. Having a civil war in Afghanistan is not good for Afghanistan. It's not good for any of its neighbors. Uh, they want to see uh, economic prosperity for Afghanistan because uh, if Afghanistan is a poor country or a weak country, that's going to affect its uh, neighbors uh, negatively. Uh, and uh, for Iran, at least making sure that the United States is not in Afghanistan is going to be important. Uh, uh, so in order to achieve these foreign policy goals, Iran is going to work with any country that uh, shares similar values. And that is why Iran is working with both Pakistan and India to make sure, and China to make sure that uh, these uh, policy goals are achieved.
Sir, we, we have received another question from Mr. Ahmed from Government College University at Sandahu. Uh, he is asking from Ambassador Azad Ahmed Chaudhary that how does Pakistan look at East Turkestan Islamic movement? Uh, how does Pakistan look at China's concerns regarding ETIM and security and stability in the Xinjiang region? Do Pakistan sh uh, share Chinese concerns about the role of ETIM and their link with Taliban? Well, um, Pakistan regards ETIM as a terrorist entity. And therefore, ETIM is not welcomed in Pakistan. I don't know whether the Taliban support or fight ETIM. My sense is that the Taliban do not support ETIM. I think ETIM has been uh, planning terrorist actions and activities in western part of China. And any terrorist entity committing any acts of terror in any country is not acceptable. So that is the position I, as far as I am concerned that Pakistan holds on ETIM, which has changed its name now to, to I think, Turkestan Islamic Party or something. Thank you very much. Uh, we have another question for uh, Mr. Mirwais Yassin, asked by Aisha from Kaite Adam University. She asks, the Afghan government always accuses Pakistan of supporting the Taliban. Do you think it is wrong to regard the Taliban as Pakistan proxies after they unilaterally shut down the border crossing until Islamabad meets its visa-free travel demand? Do you think that increasingly independent nature of the Taliban can prove to be a wild card in regional affairs? Well, I mean, today is different from yesterday. In tomorrow, it will be different from today. We have to, to, to judge things by uh, developing what is unfolding. What I would like to say, we cannot them proxies, and uh, we cannot them uh, to be in control. There were some relations between Taliban and Pakistan, but that's always vulnerable. That, as I said, I'm coming back to my to do my first part of uh, of, uh, uh, of deliberation. That the sooner the better we have to return the peace. Otherwise, the civil war will have a reverse effect on the region, economically and security wise. And what I would like to say that economically, why I'm mentioning it first because that gives birth to the insecurity or to terrorism. In, 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 in mere wording, I would say. So we have to improve things. The sooner the better in the neighbor has to play a vital role in it. The United States is gone. That is now a history. We will be not particularly in Afghanistan. They might, they must be concerned for their bigger goal in the region in regard with China, in regard with Russia, and in, in regard with Pakistan, India. But, and there's a big but. The effects of the Afghan kiosk will directly spill over to the neighboring countries, and we have to find a remedy for that, peaceful remedy sooner. And I'm hopeful that our neighbor will play very play very positive role in Qatar's today, tomorrow, the day after. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Another question for Dr. Gao. How does the question is asked by Ms. Amina from School of Politics at IR Kajabin University? She asks, How does China look at potential of extremism and militancy leading to instability in Afghanistan and its impact on Xinjiang? Uh, excuse me, can you repeat the question? Uh, how does China look at potential of extremism and militancy leading to instability in Afghanistan? And its impact on the NGM. Okay. Um, first, uh, let me uh, uh, just, I think, elaborate uh, just uh, one or two minutes about my understanding of, of Afghanistan situation. Uh, you know, in China, we have a long history of uh, uh, foreign policy principle. 
it's non-interference of internal uh, uh, of the interference, uh, non-interference within other internal affairs. Uh, referring to the Afghanistan situation, China adhered the same principle. So the future of Afghanistan uh, belongs to the Afghanistan people, not China, not Pakistan, not the neighboring countries. They actually, to the fundamental, fundamentally speaking, it belongs to the Afghanistan people itself. What I mean in my points, one of my points, one of my three points, is that uh, more internal, more outsiders involved in the internal affairs of uh, Afghanistan, they may bring more difficulties or complicated uh, situation to this region. So that's what I mean. So if any other country like Turkey, like USA, like other can want to involve it because any kind of excuses, okay, you do it. This is China, that's different from China. China is here different uh, principle foreign policy. That is why China have a good relationship with many, the China is share the civilizations, same civilizations. So I think that is the, uh, what kind of policy uh, uh, the countries you adhere, you, 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 you respect that the other countries. You know. So that is why China has no troops in foreign countries. China has no soldiers in foreign countries. Any country want to do something like the USA to have this, like the Soviet Union have did in the past uh, centuries, you know, you do it. China have nothing to say with that. You, you do something that you have the consequences. What I mean is the international relations. So I don't care that any country wants to involve more in the, the situation. What I mean is that the more situation, more complicated in the region if more outsider involved. It. Anyone, any, anyone knows that. So what I mean that. Referring to the Pakistan, uh, Pakistan, China, I think you know everyone. China uh, knows that China, and Pakistan have the you know we have the iron uh, you know brother as a relationship. You know, uh, we, we many we share the same views as uh, of international relations. Uh, referring to uh, just the mission, say that. Excuse me, Any? Okay, so thank you very much. Um, we have received another question. Uh -huh. Our, um, Adas, Ambassador Adas Turgu, the question is asked by Toki Ahmed, uh, who has worked at CGSS as security and strategic analyst. He asked, how can peace, stability, and reconciliation can be achieved when the Western powers do not desire. The Taliban government was not accepted before and it will not be accepted now. Is a division in North and South is expected? Well, um, there are different scenarios and you saw Dr. Murad Aslam also talk about them. Um, the civil war could go either way. The <clears throat> Taliban could also uh, capture, but may or may not be able to retain their power. They may not have legitimacy this time around. And, and therefore, uh, the point of focus honestly should be an, a, an inclusive democratic government in Afghanistan led and formed by the Afghans themselves. So we have to drive this notion into, the, into all factions, including the Taliban, that military victory will not achieve your goals. We also, we also have to tell the Afghan government that the use of force that you think will be enough to prevail over the entire Afghanistan is also not guaranteed because United States and NATO had 150,000 troops at one point. So no military solution. I would again say that the only solution that all regional players should support is a political settlement that engages all Afghan factions, including the Taliban, 
taking into account the ground realities. Ground realities means that there is a legitimate government in Afghanistan. And the other ground reality is that Afghan Taliban are also in, uh, in control of several areas, including some rural areas and small cities. So that's, that's what we should focus on. I think we should not speculate a doomsday scenario uh, at this point in time. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Now, the last question for today. Uh, the question is asked by Ms. Nadia from Karachi University. She asked Dr. Guru Dastan, what does Turkey accept from regional countries and international community with regard to perspective and length of refugees from Afghanistan? Okay, uh, thank you. A good question, because if you don't define the ultimate goal, then you fail. Well, Turkey is in Afghanistan maybe since 1921. Even though Turkey was suffering from the invasion of the Western powers and uh, fighting against uh, them. And right after then, there has been escalations in terms of the level of relations because of the historical global developments. On the other hand, today, Turkey does not perceive Afghanistan as a country that interest is at the first enrollment. Interest, there is no interest for Turkey to be in Afghanistan. I mean, Turkey uh, does not want to have a marginal input into its economy or politics or etc. It's it's maybe because emotional that Turkish statesman wants to be involved in Afghanistan to give a hand as a responsible state. That's that's it. Or if Afghans say, okay, we don't want you, go, then that means it ends. Turkey will leave Afghanistan. And there will be something going on in a remote area. So please do understand Turkish perception and future course of actions based on not interest, but an um, emotional commitment to Afghans. Second thing, if this situation escalates in future, the burden on human, the burden on Afghan public is something that neither of the states or communities can justify. We know the practices of the civil war right after the invasion of Russia. So if it repeats in this age, neither of the states can excuse of having a responsibility on it, mainly the United States. So what I suggest is first for the states involved to act responsibly, be in collaboration and coordination, and address directly the needs of Afghans and be committed. Otherwise, a new wave of radicalism, a new wave of brutality will be in the region that has a potential to diffuse all neighboring countries. So that it must be the least and the last word Peace is a must, not only for Afghan national government or Taliban, but the Afghan people. Otherwise, it's your kids, your children will lose it. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Murat Aspen, uh, for your remarks. Um, now, I think we have discussed all the important points, and this was indeed a very healthy and insightful discussion. I'm again, I'm again um, grateful to our esteemed panelist, Ambassador Adam Bahnachodri, Ilwai Yazini, Dr. Paul Song, Dr. Fuad Asti, and Dr. Murta Stan for joining us and sparing time out of your hectic schedule. I am very grateful to all the all other participants who have been listening to our program. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for joining us. And see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Khodafis.